What is going on everybody? Welcome to the third supercomputer tutorial series with our Raspberry Pis. I am assuming everyone is using Raspberry Pis, so that's what we're going to be talking about. What we need to do now is if you've got your two Raspberry Pis and you've got your two SD cards, what we need to do is put um, an operating system on that uh, those SD cards. And really we just have to do one of the SD cards. We're going to put the operating system only on one of them. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to get the image from raspberrypi.org slash downloads. So we'll go there, raspberrypi.org slash downloads. And on this page, uh, we're just going to download Noob's version, well, at least for me it's 1.3.4. Um, I'm not really sure what the difference between light and unlight is. I'm guessing Noob's Light only works if you have the internet or something to install it. Anyway, I know this one works, so that's the one I'm going to suggest you download. So click on that one. Hopefully it downloads 1.3 gigabytes, depending on your internet, how long it's going to take for you to download it. Uh, so if you have really bad internet, uh, wait a while. <laughs> And uh, so I've already actually downloaded it, so I'm going to go ahead and cancel this download. And I'm going to continue the video, so if you're downloading it, I suggest you just pause the video uh, and come back whenever you're done downloading it. So once you've got that installed, the next thing you're going to want is this formatting tool. So click on that, and you'll go here and just download the version that is you know matches whatever you are. So once you have that downloaded, the next thing you want to do is open up the formatter. So now if you don't have an SD card in your SD reader, I guess I should have said that you better get an SD reader, but I just assumed everybody maybe has one. I actually have to use one of my old laptops because my current computer doesn't even have one. But anyway, uh, so you'll need an SD reader. So the next thing you want to do is once you've done that, the only thing you have to do is hit option here and you want to change format size adjustment to on. Hit OK, and then you'll hit Format. So you hit OK, OK, and it formats it pretty quick. And so now the, the memory card is completely formatted. Fantastic. So once you've downloaded it, uh, you'll obviously extract it and then go into it, and you'll have all of this basically there. So what you want to do is all you have to really do is, I don't know why that's like that. Why you all you have to do is just, you know, take this and move it into your SD card slot. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Um, copy it into this G. And do some more waiting while this takes place. All right, mine is almost done. Um, as you'll find, uh, this entire process, there is a lot of waiting to be done. Uh, so anyways, be prepared. This was short compared to one of the weights you'll have to do. Now that that's complete, uh, you can eject that SD card and you're going to want to put it into your Pi. Now for this next part, uh, and really just this next part, um, I'm going to have to use like a standalone camera or something. I can't use a screen recorder. So you'll have to bear with me. It won't be the sexiest, but luckily it's only for a few seconds that you'll have to bear with the... Uh, the standalone camera. So anyways, let's uh, transfer over that. Alright, so now once you've got your SD card uh, with everything you wrote to your SD card, the next thing you want to do, let me fix the camera a little bit, next thing you're going to want to do is you can plug the SD card in. Uh, real quick, I would just say that I like to mark everything on here, so like the SD card has a 1 on it, and that 1 corresponds to the node, right? So the plug also has a 1 on it, which corresponds to the one on the switch, which corresponds, there's also a one in the power, and where it's plugged in, it also has a one on it, so you know exactly what you've got, or where everything is. And it's mostly useful in case of like failure and stuff for you to trace where everything is, but also if you wanted to turn something off, you want to make sure you're turning off the right thing and all that. So, anyway, it's just a helpful tip. Uh, so the next thing you want to do is go ahead and plug in the SD card, easy enough, just slip it in there. And once you've done that, now you want to go ahead, before you turn it on, plug in all the peripherals. Sometimes when you're plugging in uh, various USB-based stuff, um, it does suck some power when you do that. 
And so you run the risk, especially if you're not pushing, like what I'm pushing is a, you know, 1500 milliamps. If you're only doing like 700 or 800 milliamps and you plug something in, you might drop power for a second. Now that might not, you know, it might just be for a second, but you're still going to boot off and you run the risk of corrupting the SD card. Uh, there's a really high possibility of doing that. It's like 30% chance of corrupting it when that happens. So anyway, so we'll plug all those in. This is my S or my uh, HDMI cord. I'll plug that in. And finally, I've got this nice old keyboard. Any USB keyboard will do. Can't have that old circular stuff. So plug that in. And now we're ready to go ahead and boot this thing up. Boot up is pretty simple. You just either plug it in or unplug it and replug it in, and that'll uh, give it the signal to boot up. If your Pi does not boot up immediately, uh, you should see here how long it kind of takes for lights to start blinking. Already the uh, monitor is on, but uh, if the a like sometimes like if the ACT, which is this top green light, sometimes it'll blink really weak, uh, and it just never turns on or gets fully illuminated. Uh, if you have something like that happening to you, chances are uh, you have a corrupt SD card. And in fact, I'm going to have to go ahead and unplug this. Chances are you have a corrupt SD card um, or your power supply is too weak or your Pi is bad. But the highest, highest likely possibility there is that your... Um, your, your power supply is probably pretty weak or your SD card is corrupt. It's unlikely that your Pi is the problem. Okay, so once you have uh, all that ready, you should be able to see uh, the uh, in installation for the operating systems on your screen. So I'm going to move the camera up now. And so here you have your options. Sorry again for the uh, poor screen recording. Uh, this is the best it's going to get for now, though. And uh, after this, I think this will be the last step. So anyway, you can use the arrows on your keyboard and go through all these if you want to look at what you can install. Basically, you can. that's why I like noobs, uh, is you can install all kinds of different operating systems and just kind of play around and see what you like. But for us, we're going to use Raspbian, so kind of highlight that. Hit enter. And then to install, you can just hit the I key on your keyboard and hit yes. Good stuff. Okay, and then this process will go on and on and on. And so it'll probably take a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here. Uh, we'll continue on in another video uh, with the next steps. And we'll actually be on a screen recorder from there, I'm pretty sure. So uh, no more of this silly screen stuff. So anyways, hopefully you guys are having fun. If you want to play with your new Raspberry Pi after this installs, what you can do is as soon as it boots up, type in uh, start X and that will get you started. I, can't, I don't even know if the first time you log in, you have to log in or not, but your username is always Pi and your password is Raspberry. So um, that's all you need. And after you log in, you can type in S-T-A-R-T-X and that takes you to your desktop and you can kind of play around if you want. But... Uh, the next video will start the uh, next steps in the supercomputer. So, anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.